So, turn in your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 1. This will be basically simple. Uh, we need the simplicity of it. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed that's beginning to lack, I saw it at the conference and it's lacking some other places, is just preaching of the gospel itself. Um, I can say to you all day long, the gospel of Christ, the gospel of the grace of God, the glorious gospel, but you don't know what that is. Those are just words. You'd have to know what's contained in them. What is the gospel of Christ? What is it about the grace of God? And uh, So I'm going to look at Paul, and if I had a title, it would be first of all. All right, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy. Identification of the letter, then the title is right, it is unto Timothy. Unto Timothy, my own son in faith, grace, mercy, peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, and that gives you a reference. When Paul went into Macedonia, you can go to the book of Acts and check out when he went to Macedonia, and you'll understand about this book. He said, I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. So is it charged to the preachers to teach no other doctrine than what Paul taught? Okay. In other words, there, there is a time in the Bible that Paul's message is the message. And you will not hear that on radio and TV. They're not emphasizing Paul whatsoever. They believe in following the red words. They believe in following the earthly Jesus. They believe in following the other letters. But they never really put great stock in Paul and his apostleship. Now, is he an apostle by the commandment of God? Okay. Verse 4, Neither give heed to fables, Endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. So godly edifying is part of it. I was thinking about this chart up here. You look at this chart. If you're lost, what does it look like? That will not save you. Number one, the gospel ain't on there. Read it. First Corinthians 15 not on there. It's the gospel of the grace of God, the gospel, circumcision, uncircumcision. That won't do you any good. That's what I listened to this weekend. Folks, you either know what it is or you don't know what it is. That is all true. But if I'm lost, I can't look at it and get saved. That's a teaching chart. You understand, I can teach you all day, but it didn't please God by the foolishness of teaching to save. What did it please God? Preaching. You can't teach a lost man. He doesn't have the mind of Christ. You understand? not knocking that down. I'm saying that's a teaching. We put it up there. It's a teaching chart. But that won't save you. And you can read every word of it and it won't save you. Why? Because if 1 Corinthians 15 ain't on there, you don't know the gospel. Is that something wrong, folks? The gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. And if you think I'm kidding, you go on the radio and TV and see if you hear the gospel of Christ and have it read to you on the radio and TV. Who would not want you to hear the gospel of Christ read? The God of this world. And if it accidentally got read, what would he do? He'd pervert it with your activity. It won't work, folks. Now watch. Read on. He said, Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart, not love, charity, and of good conscience and of faith unfeigned, from which some, having swerved, have turned aside with vain janglings, 
desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor where they affirm. Who is it that doesn't understand or affirm? The teachers. Those are teachers out there that ain't going to do you no good. Man, I had them in school. They were just absolutely worthless. They were so hopped up on their pride of their self-ability. You learn nothing from them. Folks, I get so happy when I learn something during the week and I want to show it to you and you sit there like a dead log. And I think you're going to be all excited and jump up and holler like a Pentecostal and you just sit there like... Well, folks, Pentecostals jump up and down. They don't even know what they're jumping up and down for. It just feels good. <laughs> now watch. He says in verse 8, But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for who? It's not made for a righteous man. A righteous man don't need the law. Okay? But for the lawless, disobedient, for the ungodly, for the for sinners, for unholy, for profane, for murderers of fathers, murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Now, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which committed to my trust. Okay. We've got something that's committed to Paul. If I read you verse 11, do you know what it is? You know the title. Right? You know who had it. Verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has enabled me, for He counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who is before a blasphemer, a persecutor, and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly and unbelief. And the grace of our Lord is exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ must show forth all long suffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on Him to life everlasting. So, is it in me first in Paul? Okay, turn to Galatians chapter 1. We'll just... Keep going until we get to the gospel. Galatians chapter 1. Folks, I know it's hid because when I ask people, they don't know it. Then when you tell them, they say, oh, I knew that. Did you really? Why didn't you tell me? Galatians chapter 1 verse 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of of Jesus Christ. So, whatever it is that Paul is talking about is a revelation from Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay? The revelation of Jesus Christ. Turn with me to Titus chapter 1. I know this is simple, but there might be somebody in your head and got a clue what I'm talking about. You're going to leave here and you're going to have to answer for it. In Titus chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, a servant of, G of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, in the hope of eternal life which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began, but hath in due times manifest His word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior, who had the preaching that is of power, who is it committed to? And how did it come? Command of God our Savior. Then why is it that I don't hear it? I'm saying pretty important, wouldn't you? Okay? 1 Corinthians 15. When Paul went in the area of Macedonia, Corinth is part of it. When he went into Corinth, he didn't go in there to show them his wisdom. He didn't go in there to show them that he was a Pharisee. He didn't go in there to show them that he was some outstanding individual that knew truth and had an IQ of 180. He didn't go in there to show any of that. We'll look at that in just a minute. 
But now watch. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. All right, they must be having some problems that he has to write this letter because some of them are forgetting and some of them are being used. Some of them are being with legalizers that have come in, some people that are just aggravators and would pervert and do all the things that are necessary to get a person not to see or remember. He said, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. Now, you understand. They didn't get saved by Paul. They didn't get saved by that chart. They didn't get saved by Jerry. They didn't get saved by... Anything. They didn't get saved by going to church. What saved them? The gospel. By which also you saved, if you keep in memory what I, believe, or what I preached unto you. Uh oh, how did it come? By preaching. If it's preached, according to this, what would Satan work on? Memory. That's what he'd work on. Okay? If you keep remembering what I'm preaching to you, unless you have believed in vain, that's a lost believer. Now, you understand, I'll read you three and four, and a lot of people in here will probably say, well, I knew that. But you never came to a point where you trusted it to be your salvation. You understand? There's something in this Bible that you have to trust. And once you l really trust it, God seals you. Now watch, verse 3. For I delivered unto you, next two words, three words. First of all. Paul walked into Corinth, had one purpose in his mind. I've never went to a conference. I've never been to a Bible study that there wasn't one thing on my mind for you to get the gospel. I may bring a lot of things around and bring it to you. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Just because you're sitting in here don't mean nothing to God. Just because you made a journey here don't mean nothing to God. Just because you gave up a little time to get here don't mean nothing to God. The will of God is for you to be saved. Because if it ain't, His Son died in vain. You understand? His Son did not die in vain. His Word will not return unto Him void. What He says He will accomplish and what Jesus Christ did was enough. Now watch. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also what? Then was there a point in Paul's life where he became knowledgeable and received what he's fixing to say? How that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scripture, and was buried and rose again the third day, according to the Scripture. Do you remember that every day? Or are you saying, that can't be all there is? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Well, I just want you to turn it down because we're going to refresh you every once in a while with it. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We're coming to a time in history, a time in biblical history, when there may be one last grace believer and we get out of this place. If you come to one last grace believer, the one last one that God saw all around is turned to perversion, it is turned to what Timothy is told will happen. They'll be ungodly. They will be lovers of self, lovers more of themselves than man. They'll be the things that he lists about them. They'll be bad, bad, and worse. And just get that last grace believer. God extended that mercy and kindness out there to get that last one before he takes his body out of here. Why is he taking his body out of here? Because his body is the believers that have trusted the gospel of Christ. 
They are not subject to the wrath to come. They are not subject if they're alive to die. They have been given all this knowledge in Paul's writings. And that last grace believer say, well, what is he going to earn? He got an inheritance. Folks, it's about being inherited, get an inheritance of the adoption by the Spirit of Christ so that you can leave this world and go to the Father. And that's God's way. Now watch. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Okay? What is the preaching about? The cross. Okay? What is it to them that perish? What is it to those that are saved? Our God. Verse 19, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, this is God's wisdom, the world by wisdom knew not God. What did he know that they would exalt above him? Their wisdom. There's more stock put in schools and college than reading the Bible. We have some of the most intelligent, incredible people in the world that can build just about anything. That is nothing new. The sons of God that bred the daughters of men had children that could do more than they do now. You can bet on it. There are things they did back then that God said, I've got to kill what's on the earth, and he flooded it. They would have took over the world. You'd never been born. They'd have took it over. You're talking about mass takeover by aliens. That would have been the alien mass takeover. And they're angels. They're sons of angels. Now, folks, that's in Genesis. This is when the sons of God saw the daughters of men, they took them. And they had children. And God did not kill sin with a flood. He killed some bodies. And it was dangerous. And God knew it. And for you to have any hope of ever living, ever being born, He had to do that flood. But Noah found grace that he could bring the races on. And did. But sin didn't leave, folks. If he's going to kill sin, he'd have killed everybody. Why? Noah's a sinner too. There's things happened back there that had to happen because knowledge is nothing new, folks. And do you think those angels now are gone, the ones that have fallen still? There's other angels falling. Hmm. wonder where they're at. I wonder how it is that some men have the absolute power over men to preach. I mean, they can make people do anything they want, get them to do anything they want, and not say nothing. They don't teach a thing. They don't need to open the Bible. Their charisma and their organization have ruled. And people just flock to it. Just flock to it. It, it overwhelms me as I watch it how they just log in there and you say, what did he preach? Oh, no, it was great. But what did he preach? Oh, he's great. He told me I'd get better. When Paul wrote that we're accounted for sheep for the slaughter, Somebody's right and somebody's wrong, ain't they? I'll bet you that Paul spoke the truth in Christ. And if you were to read the 13 letters he wrote, you might find out the world's a little out of sync with him, like a whole lot. Now watch. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Not singing. It didn't please God by the foolishness of singing to save them to believe. You understand? It didn't. What did it please God by? How come you have so much trouble getting people to come with you and visit? Well, you reckon the God of this world knows about what's going to happen here on Sunday morning every Sunday morning? Then what's He going to resist? 
What's he going to tell those people to do? By sublineal suggestions. Well, they got to wash their cat and dry it in the microwave. Now watch. They will gladly go to a healing church. They will gladly go to a sign church. They will go where they speak in tongues and just enjoy it and spread the news and get people to come. Well, let's see something. Verse 22, For the Jews require a what? And the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. Christ preached crucified is not a sign and is not the wisdom of the world. It is the wisdom of God. Now watch. Under the Jews a stumbling block, and under the Greeks what? Foolishness. But under them which are called. Do you hope you're called? If you don't, you're out of your mind. Somebody said, what, did he call you? say, this is God. No, you read what it said. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. Didn't say the preaching of a woman. Isn't that going on in the world today? How can a woman be a man of God? <laughs> Marine. Gene. Then, folks, it said that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished. Oh, man of God, Timothy letter. Not woman. Who made man and woman? Does God know the difference? Does God know the difference in them in their attitude? Does the God of this world know the difference in their attitude? Who did the God of this world go to in the garden? Why? Because she's going to convince the man. Watch TV. You'll see it. There are people that flock to these women preachers. And I look at them and I go, Did you ever read the Bible? You're supposed to be handling and preaching the Word of God. You said, Did you never read there where it says you're not? Now watch. He said in verse... 25, but because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Where would I find the weakness of God and the foolishness of God? Take your son and nail him on a cross and let him kill him. Doesn't that seem kind of foolish? And yet God said it's the power of God unto salvation. The preaching of the cross. The preaching of the gospel. So is the preaching of the cross the preaching of the gospel? Okay. 1 Corinthians 15. Let's just try it again and see. 1 Corinthians 15, 3. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. Did Paul know the law? Was he as touching a righteous in the law blameless? Was he a Pharisee? Okay, then obviously he's a teacher of the law, right? Okay? If someone had to die for your sins, what has have you done? Because sin is a transgression of the law. Are you with me? Then what did Paul have to admit? That he had broken the law. The law couldn't help him. The law couldn't save him. That's why he's so good at writing the Roman letter. When he writes that Roman letter, he's explaining the law and what it could and could not do and how it wasn't helping the Romans who had become circumcised and how they'd engrafted themselves into an olive tree that's fallen. <laughs> Folks, it's not a smart idea to go out there in the yard and you got a tree that's fell down or cut down and engraft something onto it and expect it to grow. It's got to have root. There's no root in being engrafted into the green olive tree which represents Israel and the law. Yet law is tough today. How do I know? Because of confession of sins. 
You can't confess sins if there's no law. Now watch. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Isn't that simple? How come you didn't know that all your life? Okay? Now watch. Turn with me to Romans chapter 1. If I was to walk into the First Baptist Methodist Church here in Selma, and they let me preach, you know, right. And I went in there with one purpose, was to preach the gospel, show them that why Christ died, and that there was absolutely nothing they could do, no aisle walk, no turning from your sins, giving your life to Christ, asking Jesus in your heart. There wasn't nothing you could do. You had to simply trust the gospel of Christ to be the absolute power of God unto salvation. What do you think they'd do? No, oh, no, they wouldn't. They wouldn't throw you. In. Oh, their genes got it right. They're 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 civilized. They say, brother Jerry, we don't need you here any longer. I've been done that away in the nursing uh, rescue missions and other things because of preaching of that. Now watch, Romans chapter 1, verse 13. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was led hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. So I know the letter is written to Gentiles. They're just a specific Gentile. They are circumcised Gentiles. I'm a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and unwise. Obviously, he's not talking to a Jew because there would be no need of him talking to a Jew about the uh, barbarians, the Greeks and the barbarians. He identifies the Greeks as the wise. He identifies the barbarians as the unwise. All right? So as much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also the Greek. Okay. If I stand before you and say, I'm here to preach to you the gospel of Christ, and then go through a lot of things and leave, what are you going to do? That's right. You're going to wonder what it is. You're going to go, hey, you're going to preach the gospel of Christ. What was it? You ever think about that, folks? You got the gospel of Christ probably read to you in a Baptist church but never emphasize that was the power of God unto salvation. Because when I tell you what the gospel is, you don't know it, and I tell it to you, I knew that. You've heard in your life that Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again the third day. But the emphasis was not that's the power of God unto salvation. The emphasis was you walk the aisle, give your life to Christ, turn from your sins, repent of your sins, and ask Him by saying the sinner's prayer. That won't save you. If that saves you, Christ died in vain. Say, well, I know that Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world. He's the Lamb that took away the sin of the world. That's not the Gospel. The Gospel is specific. Paul put it specific, put it in the letter specific, and said it was how they were saved. How come you didn't know that when you were young? Because somebody hid it from you. Well, why would they hide it from you? I thought it was our jobs in this pulpit to want all men to be saved. Not church, not join a situation. Folks, you can't join this church. We have no fellowship rules. You can be a member of this church by being saved. You become part of the body. We don't have a board members and we don't have anything but a couple of deacons and they're just deacons. They do a good job for me when I came. I am not the head of authority here, folks. I'm the preacher. I don't know what you give because they don't look. You can't ever accuse me of standing up here and looking at you and say, that guy didn't give nothing. No. You can't accuse me of getting in your personal life. I don't have your personal life. I have enough with mine. What I want you is saved. So that you become 
fellowship and fruit. Paul said, I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. Then what did he say? I'm here to preach the gospel to you. Verse 16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. No, people are ashamed of it. I mean, they're ashamed of the gospel of Christ. How many of you are saved? You don't raise, I don't want you to raise your hand. I want you to think. How many of you saved? How many of you have given the testimony of the gospel of Christ in your life to somebody last week? How many of you have even given testimony of your salvation since you've been saved? Are you ashamed of it? Are you afraid that you run somebody off? Well, you know, you don't want to run them off, but you let them go to hell or death or both. Think about it, folks. I mean, you come in here and sit down. What did you come in here and sit down for? I know the air is on. And there's, there's something coming through the vents. It's Gene's ribs. What did you come in here for? You come in here to get refreshed about the gospel so that you would have an energy to go out and tell somebody. So you know, somebody says, Well, I really won't win. Today's the rapture. You're a liar if you ain't witnessing. If you're not witnessing, you really don't want the rapture to happen today. You know why? Because the gospel is the way you get out of here. Yes. Because if people don't get saved, you're not going until that last one gets saved. What if you were the instrument of that delivery? Wouldn't that be something? You witness a person, they get it, you're gone. You stand before the Lord and He said, Good! You got Him! Wouldn't that be cool? I don't know. There are people that don't get excited about anything. They do. Look at all a bunch of these deadheads. You're just sitting in here going, when's he going to get done? That food's back there. <laughs> <laughs> I told her I was in the ER here in Vaughn. After, right after the wreck, my blood pressure was 117 over 77. And they're looking at me going, they checked it again. They're going, you ought to be about 180 over 100. And I said, no, I'm saved. And they got, they, they, it started starting a reaction, you know. And I witnessed to everybody I was in contact with. Because it might have been my last day on earth, so I was witness. maybe get that last one, go out alive before I did die in there. And I ain't sure I didn't die in Birmingham when he grabbed my arm. Oh, but I witnessed to them in there. I witnessed, to, and I've witnessed to people, my, my nurses, male and female, all that. I witnessed to all of them. Uh, Steve Atwood was sitting in there with me. Um, he came up almost the next day when we were in the hospital, and a young lady come in there, and I started witnessing to her, and I didn't have a dollar. I didn't even have a pocket. And Steve said, I said, Steve, you got a dollar? And he said, I think I do. And he came me a dollar. I said, faith to faith. Are you getting it? His faith to my faith, witness to the girl. She said, I'm going to take this home and frame it. She said, I've never seen anything like that. And I didn't even have, I had to take a used dollar from somebody else. <laughs> I, I was kind of hoping he had a dollar. Either that or I was going to ask him for a 20, and that would have been rough, you know, whatever. Now watch. Romans, I'm not bragging about it, folks. That is your job. That is your right. That is your ability to talk to people about the Lord. Say, what well, it might cost me. Too bad. But it costs Jesus Christ. There's a teaching going on right now that Jesus didn't go to hell. And it's corrupt in a lot of classes. And it's come from up north. If Jesus didn't go to hell, you're going It ain't the grave, folks. Jesus Christ went to hell. We proved it Wednesday night, right, Mike? Went through it. Craig? Hey, Craig. 
We, we went through it, didn't we, Wednesday night? Oh, that's right. No, that's right, you won. Leon was there, wasn't he? It ain't no doubt, is there? There ain't a doubt about it. It says in the Scripture he went to hell. And yet they're teaching he didn't. I want my Savior, and I don't say this wrong, I wanted him to go to hell. I don't want to go. And I can't now because he did. I'm complete in him. I don't ever have to worry about hell. I don't have to worry about death. All i got to worry about is, where is that last knucklehead that won't believe yet? Find him. So we can get out of here alive. Wouldn't it be great to be the generation of alive that went out alive? Wouldn't that, be a, wouldn't that be something? Now, I'm telling you, there ain't no difference. If you close your eyes and sleep, you don't know anything anyway. But just to go out alive, man, just be witness and go! That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Now watch. Verse 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Who is it not the power of? Those that don't believe. Then what would Satan want? He want them not to believe, right? Well, turn to Second Corinthians chapter four. Second Corinthians chapter four. Verse three. But if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Does Paul possess a gospel? Do the Corinthians have a gospel? Is our a pronoun? If our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are what? In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Right? What would keep the gospel of Christ the light of it, called the glorious gospel. You know, there's all kinds of arguments. The gospel of Christ, the gospel of the grace of God, the glorious gospel. Folks, there's only one gospel. That's what Paul said. For if there be another, which is not another, it can be called different names in association with who it's dealing with and whatever. But you know what? The gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. Now watch. In whom the God of the world blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Turn with me to Romans 10. In Romans 10, we talked about this one time, verse 13. Okay? For whosoever should call upon the name of the Lord should be saved. Okay, that's the only verse in the Bible. What will you do? Okay, what's his name? That's the only verse you got in this Bible. What name? It didn't say call on the Lord. It said call on the name of the Lord. What's the only, if this is the only verse in the Bible, I mean, we got a, just a blank book and that's the only verse. What can we do in the verse? What if we don't know his name? I'm trying to make a point to you. What if we don't know his name? Okay. What if I don't know the gospel if it's the power of God unto salvation? You out of luck. You can talk, you can talk all you want about the gospel of the circumcision, the gospel of the uncircumcision. You can talk about the dispensation of grace. You can talk about anything you want that won't get it. There are too many people that exalt rightly dividing the word of truth. That is not an exalted birth. That is my job. Ministries are built on rightly dividing the word of truth. That's a pastor's job to do as he preaches. The exaltation.
condition of a minister is the Lord Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to Scripture. He was buried and He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And nothing else. We're not here to build a church. We're not here to go and be a gymnasium church and have all kinds of things going on. It's for people to get saved. And it has nothing to do whether you ever see them get saved. You know why? Because you just preach it to them. And it's very disappointing. It's very powerless. I'm talking about to the individual. Because when you preach, you want somebody to come and pat you on the back and tell you what kind of good preacher you are. And you want somebody to go, oh my God, that was a fine little message. You want somebody to just exalt you and make you finer than apple pie. That's the flesh. But if you preach the gospel of Christ and believe it is the power of God and leave it alone and know what God's going to do. That's up to God. There are people that are highly exalted in the grace message. They ain't nothing. We exalt them for their work, but them, they're nothing. Paul said he wasn't. Now watch. In Romans chapter uh, 10, verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on Him in whom they not believe? No, I guess you had to believe in the Lord, wouldn't you? You'd probably know His name. Well, let's go on. And how shall they believe in Him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Then verse 13 doesn't come without energy. And the energy is in verse 15. Correct? It's the sending. Somebody asked me why I went to Selma. Because I believe God wanted me to go to Selma. And I wanted to go after I believed He did. Must have been right. I'm still here. Satan has tried to get rid of me several times. You know what? <clears throat> as long as we're here, pray the gospel is preached. Wherever I'm at, pray the gospel is preached. I'm not ashamed of it, folks. I'm not ashamed of it at all. Now watch. Turn with me to uh, uh, Philippians chapter 2. And that's not big mice back there. That's probably some of my kinfolk back there probably eating before we are. <laughs> Philippians 2. <clears throat> Look with me at verse 8. And being found in fashion as... A man, that's the Lord. Well, let's go back in verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal to God, but made himself of no reputation. People of reputation are seen more than what they even preach. People look at them. Years ago they had a conference and everybody wanted paparazzi. They wanted all of us preachers to stand there. They were taking pictures like we were some kind of superstars. Why? We're nobody. We're just men. Stars are just men. Folks, nobody's nobody unless you make them somebody. TV does that. Billy Graham ain't nobody. Somebody made him what he is. Joel Osteen, none of them are nobody until somebody makes them. News, TV, all the things he does, publishing, publishes. All that stuff makes them big. But they're nobody. They're just human beings. And they're no more human than you are. They're not superhuman beings, folks. They're just human beings. Their wisdom is the same as yours. It comes from being taught and, and repetition and all that. The only wisdom that counts comes from this book. It comes from God, from above. Now watch. He says in verse uh, 8, who uh, 7, but made himself no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. 
and be found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to undo what? Even the death of the cross. Now, we don't make that of no value. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death. I got thinking about that. Turn with me to uh, Romans chapter 5. There was a man in this Bible that died for disobedience. There was a man in the Bible died for obedience because of the disobedience of others. In Romans chapter 5, verse 19, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. By the way, were you made a sinner by choice? You come in this world by choice? Then God was merciful to you letting you come in the world and giving you a choice. Now watch. So by the obedience of one shall many be made what? Righteousness. Righteousness. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 21. For he, God, hath made him the Lord to be what? Sin for us who knew no sin. He's a perfect sacrifice. He is flesh, because we're flesh. He's tempted in all points like as we are, but you, he knows no sin. And he does something by obedience of humbling. Turn to Galatians, and I'll read the rest of it, who made no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, what was the law not for? The righteous. If you've been made righteous, the law ain't for you. Yes or no? I mean, what's taught today, that if you're saved, the, the word they use, I'm not sure they use it for saved, but if you sin, you confess your sins. Righteousness is without sin. And you've been made righteous in Him. And the law wasn't made for righteous. I don't know. Mate, you, looking at me, okay. Turn with me to Romans chapter 5. Uh, I apologize, Romans 4. Did Abraham believe God and it was imputed to him for righteousness? Okay, if you believe God, what would you believe about God? What, what do you believe that God did for you? What do you believe Jesus did for you when he died? Think of a verse. What did Jesus Christ do for you? Now, I'm not talking about 1 Corinthians 15. That's the gospel. But what did Jesus do for you when he died? How about Galatians 1, 4? Anybody there want to read it to me? I'll read it to you. He gave himself that he might deliver us from this present evil world. He gave himself. Folks, have you got anybody in this world that you'd give yourself for and just die right in front of them? Men say, well, of course I'd do that for my wife. Well, you're going to do that. She's going to slap the snot out of you if you don't. I mean, think about it. What if Hitler was sitting next to you? Would you give yourself for him, or would you just soon turn him in or die or kill him? No, better yet, Charles Manson. How about somebody that's done you so severely wrong in your life you can't hardly forgive them? Would you give yourself for him? Come on, I don't hear nothing. Somebody you've had a grudge against for years, and you're almost 
club got so much pus in you you can't talk about it? Would you give yourself for them? Or would you even not deal with them, don't even want to talk to them? Would you give yourself for them? Come on, folks sitting in this room, there's none good, there's none righteous, there's none that doeth good, there's none that understand, whereas wretched, evil world, wicked body, there's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sin is not. Who's going to do that for us? Galatians chapter 1, He gave Himself that He might deliver us from this present evil world. He was obedient unto death. He did not say, God, Father, they're not worth it. You ever think about what God saw about you and what His Son would have to do to clear that up? And He did it. What if he's looking in that cup in the garden and he sees Jerry Sanders' face? And he looks at how bad I've been. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass. Nevertheless, my will, not my will, but thy will be done. And he died for my sins. And God saw him die. He saw him before, right before he died. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And he gave up the ghost and died. Why did he die? Because of that face he saw in that cup that was going to get wrath of God poured out on him. God was going to just make wrath all over me. And he gave himself that that wrath wouldn't be poured out on me. But then, he left his body naked and went down into hell so that I'd never, ever, ever go to hell. And God, the third day, satisfied, said, come up, that face you saw is forgiven. Wouldn't you have loved to have known that when you were young? Instead of going to church, you know, and sit in there and get training union and get to hear the preacher talk about some stories and hear all the singing and go away from there saying, Joe, I've done God a good favor. When all along, God let His Son die for your sins, be buried, bodies in a grave, and the soul is in hell. And then God forgives you and then dealt with a man to preach that to you in the first century. I love the appearing of Paul because in that appearing, he abolished death for me in what Jesus Christ did. The knowledge of it came forth. I've abolished death for those sinners Aliens from the alien from the Commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenant of promise. Every person on this earth can have my salvation if they want it. Preach it. Amen. I appreciate you being here.